that we all get to lean into. We're celebrating today, this last decade, and really now if we want to say, you know, if we go back to the 1910 conferences that David referenced the last 110 years and all 2,000 years. But now here we are, and there's this pivot where we want to see as Cal just described it, we want to see people on the ground, not like the local believers, not being at the table. We want them in the kitchen. So we're going to hear from Penny, Esther, and Steve. They're at the leading edge of how the Lord is equipping local believers to create evangelistic content in their own context. So we'll hear from Steve. I'm sorry, we're going to hear first from Penny, and then Esther, and then Steve. So go ahead, uh, Penny, next slide. Uh, it's such a privilege to be with all of you. Um, yeah, just... I feel so encouraged in my heart today. Uh, so I'm going to just share very briefly about um, a partnership that we uh, we had with Esther, who will speak after me. Um, Esther's from a certain Central Asian country, and a, a few years ago she approached our team at Create Thailand um, to uh, to partner with her uh, to create some resources. She had um, completed the finalization of a Bible translation project, and she wanted uh, a different, a few different resources. One was a, she wanted some seed sowing EV media resources developed for her people, as well as uh, scripture engagement tools to help people engage with their newly translated word and to help it to come alive for the people. So we took her ideas and um, yeah I just want to say one of the things that's so wonderful is when we can we partnership is so key it's key now in this season too as we talk about media to, for movements um, and one of our strategy pieces always in create is to use uh, is to always partner with unfield advisors culture we call them cultural advisors on every production that we do um, but Esther was <laughs> She was more than that. She really, uh, she acted as like an on-field producer, which was such a blessing. Um, and uh, so she, before we even arrived, she had, she really carried the vision so strongly. Like she had such a sense of what, um, how these things, how these resources could be used and utilized that she, uh, she had sourced all this, so many different things for us um, from props and necessary cultural items she also uh, brought her network of creatives to the table from set designers and costume designers. It was just an incredible, um, incredibly rich experience for all of us. And then of course, from our side, we, we, we took a small team of um, uh, media, our media guys um, with our, and we brought our experience and our creativity as much as we had. And um, yeah, together, just the strength. I think there's such a strength in partnership. Um, the cultural aspect and the passion as well. Um, and yeah, I just want to encourage us all um, that as we choose to partner, sometimes it's difficult to partner. You're dealing with people from different cultures, different languages, they maybe do media differently, but as we choose to partner and we give each one of us to the other, our expertise, um, we do see a multiplied strength at the table and the strength is in drawing, yeah, we draw from one another. And so I just want to, um, I'm just super excited that Esther has gone on to walk out more visions that she has uh, for her people. And she has a lot, believe me. <laughs> she has a new idea every week, actually. Uh, and yeah, she's also in the process of creating new media tools for seed sowing and discipleship endeavors. So she's going to share a few just for a minute now too, but thank you. Hello everyone. This is what was, it was actually a great miraculous answer from God working with Vision 2020 and Create International. They produced like three wonderful movies for my nation. And um, actually now these movies, they are like bridges to the Bible because we have so many traces of God and the Bible in my culture, uh, lots of historical things from pre-Islamic era. And like when people watch those movies, they link to the Bible and they do not consider it as a Russian book, but they start to receive it as a book from Allah, from God given to us. And um, like we made some ads, Facebook ads for one of the movies last year for Well of Job. And we had 180,000 views 
in my area and about 1,000 reposts and shares. And last month we did Facebook ad on Tomb of Daniel and we had 37,000 views and almost 500 shares, which is great for my area, you know, just something new. And I'm so thankful to Create International for making those wonderful movies. Very good quality, very engaging and beautiful. Thank you very much. All right, and thanks to each of you. And let's hear from Steve. The best part about serving with Create International for me has been being on location, collaborating with local people to make movies about Jesus. Now, God had spoke to me a little while ago about sharing more of my responsibilities as the director and producer more and more with others in the future, and this continues to be fulfilled in my life. It's been a privilege to be, actually, let's go back to the previous slide. Uh, it's been a privilege to be partnered with Binu Williamson, as featured here in this uh, graphic, on, diff on four different film projects in India, and Lord willing, we will make another film together in the Himalayas this September. Now, I can't take credit for any of this man's skills, though he was a motivated student in our Frontier Filmmaking Seminar back in 2016. He showed up with all these skills already and then proved them to me again and again, more and more, every year with every project. Now he has become one of my dearest friends. I look forward to making many more movies with Binu every year and will continue to do so as long as the Lord would have us work together. Thank you, brother. And also thanks to Shija. All right, next slide, please. Uh, just last year, I shared uh, directorial credit for our Inner Mongolian movie with uh, Sister Ulzi from Mongolia. I hope she's watching this today. She's featured here in this bottom corner of this graphic. She was already an accomplished scriptwriter and actor in Ulaanbaatar, and the gospel movie that we made together is uh, infinitely better because of her in input than what I would have just brought to the project alone. I would welcome working with her again and again. These are the sort of experiences we hope to repeat. Next slide. So the primary platform, oh, my slide's missing. <laughs> the primary platform we have to use to train and partner with these local producers has been through our Frontier Filmmaking Program a six-week hands-on training program where we partner with local people to make an evangelistic film uh, together. You can learn more about that at createmobile.org slash seminars. Our hope is to see these indigenous movie producers and directors empowered and motivated to replicate the model of contextualized indigenous cross-culture gospel movies in their own backyards and to the ends of the earth until our Lord returns. Amen. Awesome. I'm just having a great time. I hope you all are having a great time. We've got like 120 people from all over the world who are with us. We bless you. We're in a Q&A time right now. So uh, you know what, um, Tom, I think we're going to go, let's try the gallery view without the slide share. Or actually, we're in, now it's up to you uh, as your viewer. You can now go up to the top right of your screen and choose which viewing preference you want. I am currently in speaker view. I just clicked a gallery view and these are all our panelists. So we now are available to respond to your questions or comments. We ask you to put those in the Q&A box rather than the chat box. And then Steve and I will try to keep an eye on those. And I see, I'll, I'll, I'll ask this uh, from Howard. Does anyone have experience or contacts who are skilled in mass translating and dubbing short media films into other languages? I'd like to connect them with the four minute film that he's got falling plates. I don't know who wants to take that. And make sure you unmute yourself. Could you uh, repeat the question one more time, please? A tad slower, Clyde. Sorry, yeah, and you guys can also drag up the question and answer box and it's the, at the very bottom, but it's, does anybody have experience or contact skilled in translating or dubbing short films into other languages? And this is what I would, uh, anybody. Cal, can you answer that? Well, I mean, we have some experience with uh, animated films. It's a little bit easier. Uh, dramatic films are a whole nother, uh, a whole nother bag. And uh, probably Jim Green can speak to that because uh, Jesus Film has a whole 
you know, they know everything about that and they have all the equipment they need. So Jesus film probably for dramatic films. And then we could possibly give some help for short animated films, how you can do dubbing with that. Yeah, and Howard, for your film, for Falling Plates, because it's just voiceover, that's, a, that's much more in line with an animated film. There's no, um, no. I, I would also talk um, perhaps, Howard, with some of the Bible translation groups. You know, there's a lot of people who are doing different kinds of translation for Bible stuff, and to find out if they have any capacity for that, Verna any of the, the, you know, the vernacular media specialist kinds of peoples with these different organizations, I would, I would search them. And we probably have some links that could get you started, Howard. And you, you, you've got some connections, I'm sure, within your own networks there. And I have, uh, in the wiki that I'll, I've put in the chat box, I will put this link in there. I have a guy who kind of does this. Now it's a for-profit, so you got to pay him something, but uh, I'll put that in there. Uh, is it, Steve, can you go to the next question, or is there another question or comment to address? Just to weigh in on that, uh, uh, Howard could talk to uh, Kerry because he would have contacts for things like that. Kerry Haber. Also, Keegan, um, here at um, uh, in Thailand, Create Thailand, they're, they're locked into the Bible Project, doing all the uh, dubbing work for that whole animation series, which is a huge amount of stuff. And so uh, any of the languages here, they could probably help you with. And Howard, and I, I also know the team in Joplin, Missouri for Good News Productions International, and they do that on several of theirs. So they're friends of mine, and so I can introduce you to them. And I just want to add to all this, I agree with what everybody said. And Howard, um, maybe it would be great if you could um, list all the languages that you want help with, and then we can give it to networks around the world. And there may be some people on the ground that can offer translation as well as the recording and uh, other voiceovers for you. So it would be really help if you'd had like a white paper that lists your priorities and kind of send it around to all of us. And then we'll, we'll be glad to connect you. All right, and, and I'm keeping an eye on attendees. Here. There are also there, there there are people in the attendees list who are in these who we're talking about. So you guys yes. Can connect. So and uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll move us on. Thanks for that question. Any if, you can also maybe put a comment in here, and maybe I, I'm kind of curious to hear, you know, if any met any thoughts or pushback. I, I'm listening as I heard Carol and Calvin. I haven't heard them articulate the media for movements, uh, kind of the uh, I'm as fully as they did it today. I don't know if anybody has any comments on that, but it is kind of a new thing. Like, hey, wow, here's an exciting time. We've been working for 10 years on, you know, let's get these films out there and God is using them. And now let's, let's tie this into this media two movements thing. Anybody have any thoughts or comments about that? Well, you guys just did a really good I'm job of explaining. I'm going to add one more thing, but please send questions about this because, you know, um, the media for movements, we don't see all the details. Like Cal said, we don't know the details of what it's going to look like. But one thing I do know is that I think we as media people, as creatives, as those masterpieces that God created to do these good works, um, I think we're going to get a lot more fulfillment because we'll start to see that we're making disciples a lot more effectively. Mm. And I am thrilled that we have people that have been part of these disciple making movements who are now saying, can we just sit around the table with you guys? Can we just listen? And can, you know, and media people are saying, can we listen to you? And can we listen to you? And I, I told Calvin and Carol, it's like a dance. If you can imagine a man and a woman, you know, if they're separate on a dance floor, but then all of a sudden when they dance and then when they, as they dance skillfully, it's like, they dance as one. And ultimately, I think that's where God's heading us. It's that we as media creators and producers, content creators, as media strategists, that we're going to start being able to dance with disciple makers. Hallelujah. I love that image. Thank you. Uh, just, I see too that, you know, a couple of people have questioned, uh, can I get notes or videos? We're going to do an executive summary at the end. Uh, one question, though, I don't have access to that video that you showed about the potter. John, how can we get that, or is that available? Uh, yeah, uh, there's a, that, that whole team has made all four 
of their campaigns available. And so it's being used by about 10 different teams right now through the, just as an example to this is it started in one country in the former Yugo. And now they have taken this content, their open hands, sharing it with others. They're training trainers to do this. And you know, the thing I tell them is that what the UN could not do, they are doing, which is to try to bring peace to the whole former Yugoslavia. So you're seeing multiple denominations, multiple teams, multiple groups, literally partnering and working together and working in unison. And I think God's going to reward that. So um, obviously security is an issue. And so if somebody wants some of those, either I will figure out how to link to a place or put them on something. So we'll get it to you somehow, Clyde, so that people, because that's their heart, is they want to share that content that they've created. Can you get that and either put it in the chat box even now or, or give it to me shortly thereafter? Because I want to make sure we get that because I don't know how to get that information. Good. I just saw, yeah, like, questions. there's a, a question questions I saw the for, for John. You know, John, um, you want people to reach out to you. You got a question from somebody. Hey, how can I get talk to John about a thing in, in Asia? Uh, should they just reach you on their email, John? Um, yes, yeah, sir. You can go to, go to my website and reach me on that. Um, Tell I us will, the best way. I don't know the best way, Clyde. <laughs> uh, you can do email, which is just my, it's just jrawls at kavanaughmedia.com, or you can go to my website. Um, we are, everybody out there right now is trying to run stuff. So please be patient. I try to always respond back as fast as I can, but it might take me 24 hours or so to get back to you if you reach out. And I may introduce you to some other people and stuff too, but I'd be, any way I can help, I would be glad to try to help people. All right, thanks. And I saw that Ray just put in, and I, if that's the Gospel Resource Hub, there's a link that Ray just put in the chat, which is really significant. It's the best place to find uh, content that I've come across. So um, anyway, Cross, there's a link. Crossword. We've got a lot of questions in the Q&A here, Clyde. Oh, sorry. Yeah, help me out here, uh, Tom. Um, then I'm Nathaniel, you was asking about, um, this will be quick, uh, Cal, Cal and Carol, um, uh, what projects are you still looking for in development for Vision 2020, if any? And where can you, where, would they just talk straight to you? Yeah, that would be great. I mean, we have five projects in India coming up and five projects left in China. Uh, so these are the two areas. We've got teams focused, but we still don't have everyone in the teams that we need. You know, plus, of course, we need supernatural open doors in some of these uh, places, but um, yeah, you can just contact us directly. We, we'll put an email. Yeah. So Nathaniel, you you know that you can just connect and see if you've got teams in those areas. You have teams in some of those regions at least. Um, and then Sam was asking about the the creative process for creating social media engagement videos versus films. Oh man, that's a that's a that's a webinar in itself, Sam. Right. Um, let me see if there's other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Here, I saw it's answer, but I'll comment that Deepak yeah. asked about resources for story. Um, there, quick, there is an answer. Answers. We'll put that in the in the executive summary we offer, of course. But um, lots of resources that we'll we'll add in the summary. It, you know, here my my quickest answer. Sam asked, how would the creative process be different for creating social media engagement videos versus films? Number one would probably be well. The number one thing to me is field involvement in from the very foundation of it. So the field is driving the, 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 the creative content, all those kinds of things. Um, and also probably in most cases shorter, if you're talking about, if it's a social media type of thing, you want short content or you want really short hook videos that lead to a little bit longer content on landing pages like John was, like John demonstrated. Um, but it's, you know, and then it has to figure out like, like when I, when I create a film for like AWM, we usually have several questions at the end. We have several versions with different questions. So if you leave it open-ended and prompt a response, if the film just ends and you just play it for them and they go, oh, that was a nice film, you're missing the opportunity for engagement. So you have to have a call to action somehow built into that. So it prods the engagement. It, it says, would you like to talk with someone at the very least? Have you ever thought about these things? So it creates that engagement. That's the kind of stuff I think about when I'm talking about social media engagement videos. And I think this will be the last one. It's the last one I see from Nathaniel. Is there somewhere we can learn about 20? No, that's not the right yeah, one. No, I'm sorry. Way. It was, how can we use WhatsApp to engage with seekers without giving out personal details? John, I'm going to direct that to you. 
Um, I, I think I know who Nathaniel is. So brother, I'm sorry, this was Varsha. It was it was somebody else. Yeah, I know. miss I misstated. Varsha. Oh, okay. Um, so what was the question again then, Clyde? On How that? can we use WhatsApp to engage with the seekers without giving out personal details? Okay, so that's that's going to be a. You can either set up a business account and one, and there is challenges in some of these countries where getting it set up. And so there's been some experiments with that. So there's the security part, which is hard. And we're, you know, there's, I'll give you one idea real fast, because I know our time's about short. Uh, and I did not think up this idea. There are zip codes in the United States, for example, that you can get a card, a phone number to that match the country code of the places where your WhatsApp is trying to look local. And you can set that thing up. Once you have it set up, you can do it even through other ways. Then once you have it set up, then you're good to go. Um, and I will tell you all that if you, uh, I think Sway is potentially on here from Jesus Film. They've been doing some stuff through Africa on some WhatsApp chatbot engagement type stuff that is really interesting. So I would encourage you to reach out to him on that as well. A way to automate WhatsApp, just like we can do with mini chat on Facebook Messenger. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, Tom, if you can go back to the screen share. Thanks all. And panelists, turn your audio off. We're going to be hearing some case studies of how media has been used to engage least reached people. I will say, though, for those who um, were concerned about getting more information in the breakouts, we'll get it. You have the ability to get into a little more detail on some of those questions, and we'll explain. So let's listen to these four brief case studies. We'll be hearing uh, first from India and the Banjara. Calvin? The first one, we're going to look at this story of the Banjara people several years ago. Uh, we did a, a film for the Banjara people that are about 60 million people in India. Next. Next slide. And uh, this is just a shot of our, our team uh, working there. So we went, we did a film for them, and then they, once we finished it and gave it to them, they started using it in their church planting work. And they told us that what they would do is they would show the film, people would come to the Lord, and then they'd start a little home fellowship there and then go to the next village. And so after they had done this for five years, they invited us back to come and celebrate with them what God had done. And uh, so we drove in these down the dusty roads. This is out outskirts of Hyderabad in India. And as we came over the hill, they said there'd be a few Banjara gathered there in the celebration. Next slide. We ended up seeing there was 12,000 Banjaras gathered there under a temporary, you know, little shelter that they had made out of bamboo and and grass and things, and they were all getting together because they wanted to see, they had brought their friends and things, and they wanted to see our film, and they wanted to celebrate what God had done. Next slide. And so Carol and I were rushed up onto the stage, and they said, oh, could you, could you pray for a few people before you go on? And um, we said, sure. And three hours later, and I don't know how many hundreds of people and chickens and everything that we prayed for, but uh, then uh, we, um, next slide, we met with some of the actors uh, that were in the film and had our pictures taken. Next slide. We met with uh, some of the leaders and gave them uh, some projectors and some other things that we had raised funds for. And we met church planters like this brother here. And he explained to us, okay, yes, we've been using the film and we love this and this is how we use it. And uh, then he explained, next slide, uh, he said, and uh, after five years, we've now uh, seen over 10,000 Banjaras saved through using the film and over 500 ch new churches that were planted in the first five years. And so they were doing, they took the film, they took the initiative and did it. Uh, uh, just a few months ago, uh, some of my staff and I were looking on the internet, finding out people who were using our films and putting them up on YouTube, which we love it when they do that. And we found one particular one, the Banjara one, that we thought, this is interesting. We didn't know who this was. They put the Banjara film up on YouTube, and they had nearly 800,000 views. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? We were lucky to have 70,000. Next slide. And so what we discovered, it, it was Ravindra Naik, who was a friend of ours we would worked with. He was a, a leader and a church planter, and he also played a role in the film. And you can just click next build. And he now has over 900,000 views of that film on his YouTube account. And uh, next slide. So we realized 
that, wow, something was going on. And so we wrote them and we said, can you give us a report? We haven't heard from you for a few years. And they wrote back, oh, yes, brother, we're so happy that you contacted us. But we don't have 10,000 Banjaras saved anymore. We have 2 million Banjaras that have become believers. And we have 10,000 church planters now working in over 200 unreached, other unreached people groups in India. And, of course, I fell out of my seat and have been falling out of my seat ever since because it's just so exciting to see. Here is an example of how media can be used to spark a movement and accelerate and enhance a movement. Uh, next slide. Something else we learned about this is that um, there was a phenomenon happening with these folks putting the film on their personal YouTube uh, sites. Uh, YouTube was obviously sending that their algorithms were set to look for the people who spoke that language and that's where they would drive the traffic to. So naturally, if we had a US based YouTube account and put the film up, we'd only get a few thousand, tens of thousands, but they were getting hundreds of thousands of views because the algorithms were pushing the traffic in their direction. So we thought we need to start being more intentional about this because of the use of YouTube, 2 billion people on it per day. Uh, you know, it's just incredible. Next slide. Uh, so we started looking at who are these folks that we had worked with before that put the film up. And we began to see, as you see here, that uh, a number of them were getting in the hundreds of thousands of views. And so now we want to be much more intentional. And that's what this whole uh, strategy that we're calling Share the Love campaign is all about. Next slide. Okay. And so um, Binu is one of our partners and he did the Coochie film and he has some interesting ways that he's been seeing that distributed. Binu, thanks. you can go. Thanks. First. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. And uh, this is the story of a Kachi film. Uh, this is all the way from, we made this film for a Gujarati community in India, that is the Western part of the India. But this story is all the way from Africa. Uh, last year, I got the opportunity to go there and uh, uh, taking this film along with me and I could meet the Gujarati community over there. They are the largest community uh, dominating the business over there and they are the one who captured the market there and they are the one, the richest people in uh, Africa right now. So uh, this is the scene that you are seeing. We are invited so many uh, upper caste and especially the Gujarati community over there and this is the hotel we hired. And uh, it's a restaurant and uh, we shown the uh, uh, we brought the digital big screen and we could uh, show the movie there. Next slide. Uh, there, there were hundreds of people and uh, we arranged the sound system, special sound system and everything. And we got almost three to 400 people were there and uh, they were all could watch this movie and uh, they could really feel, uh, feel uh, and they could relate. This, this is our culture, our movie, and uh, they could relate. They are in India like. And the best part is this, the story was belongs to Jesus. And they were so amazed that uh, uh, how come uh, this story is so close to our, us, so to our culture and so close to us. And uh, we could find Jesus uh, in our culture. And the best part is after finishing, next slide, after finishing the, uh, sorry, after finishing the movie, uh, we got so many people come up and said us, uh, the worship style we have shown is the cross-culture uh, worship style. It is called satsang. And they come and ask us, why can't you come in our place, our houses and conduct the satsang uh, in, our, in our houses? And that was an amazing story, heart-touching story. Uh, so many people were there and they were, uh, they were asking the, uh, the movie where it is available. Uh, we have forwarded the link to them and some of them we hand over the uh, small um, uh, this pen drive, thumb drives and all. And the best part is right now it is in the YouTube and we got almost 274,000 views as of now. So you can have a look on that. This is the story that this movie is made for India and Indian, but it is working uh, crossing the border mm -hmm. and reaching the outside Indians, those who are staying in different parts of the world. Uh, this is the impact that we are creating with this movies. Uh, thanks. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to now go to uh, over to hear uh, a quick case. We're going to hear from Abhishek, Esther, Luke, and Patrick. Abhishek? Hello. 
Uh, my name is Abhishek um, from Create International in India. And for the last eight years, our team has been working on 2020 vision projects throughout India. Next. It has been a really great time of collaboration uh, with pastors and local workers and among unreached people to craft unique and tailor-made films uh, for every group. Next. It has been challenging, but very rewarding to see the fruit of our efforts. The job is not done, and there are more than 2,500 people groups in India, of which 90% are unreached. Next. Which comes to more than a billion people, or one out of seven of every person mm. people on earth. We need your prayers, mentoring, and assistance to help us continue to reach out and produce new films. Next. India is in a unique position because of how widespread mobile use is and how fast it is growing in this country. Young people here love to use their smartphones to watch movies and engage with their friends. It's a great opportunity and we welcome you to come to India. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek Esther. Um, so uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Central Asia. Central Asia is a big, vast area which includes all Persian and Turkic people groups who call Central Asia home. Um, most of them are unreached. Um, there are three, 365 million people, and the main religion is Islam. About 99% of the whole population is unreached. So uh, we have Create International who came and made three films for us, as I told you before. They did a wonderful job. They had amazing group working together professionally and amazingly. Um, but we still have more plans and more ideas to put on, on practice and to create bridges. So we invite uh, professional producers to come and teach my people how to make our own small videos to reach all those people living in Central Asia. Thank you. Thanks, Esther. We're going to hear again from Luke. I would like to invite you all to, as what you're doing, it's, I'm so thankful because of many of you have invested in our Muslim world throughout the Middle East and Central Asia. We stand here and, and the shoulders of many that have come to come and engage because social media today and the visual and, and audio is a new way of engaging the oral world because as, as, as we heard in this webinar that uh, a huge percentage of the Irish people are uh, or a learner. So this the, the new way of the, engaging the young people are through the visual and, and through the media. And people have, have access to social media and from, from Yemen to, to Syria to Afghanistan. So it's the best way to engage. Please come and help us reach out to these people and share the gospel and the good news of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're going to hear a video from Patrick and then a word from him. Hi, my name is Patrick and I serve as director for media and IT with Capro, and I'm also helping out with the 2020 vision. Under the 2020 vision, we're able to touch a number of the mega people groups in the Sahel sub-region of Africa. More can be done, more need to be done. It is true that the Sahel sub-region, stretching from Senegal all the way to Sudan and beyond, is hostile and volatile. And that's the reason why workers in this area need the sort of assistance, strategic assistance, that visual content creators like you can offer. I'd like to invite you to help train, help equip workers among rich people groups in these areas to create and deploy strategic visual media tools for their work. Thank you. Patrick, can you just unmute and just give us a shout out so we can see you live as well? Hi, just to invite you to Africa, where a lot of people are waiting to see you. Thank you. Awesome. All right, as we wrap, we're going to extend some opportunities and offer you some resources. So um, when God speaks, he speaks to his people. I listen to Carol and Calvin because they say so close to the Lord. Um, let's hear from them about some next steps. Amen. It's so wonderful to be with all of you, and my heart is just throbbing with excitement about we're seeing people saying, how can I connect with different people? And we know we're going to miss our monthly meetings with Clyde and Jim, and 
planning mm -hmm. for this. Uh, so we have to find some other uh, plan so we can still <laughs> see you. And we want to cultivate these ongoing partnerships. So many of our staff and even our partners are saying, what's next? What, what will we do? What can we do together? So you've heard some opportunities here. You've heard that we're not giving up. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep reaching the unreached. And um, till every tribe, tongue, and nation is praising the Lord. Yeah, amen. And um, as we said before, under this big umbrella of media for movements, there'll be different kinds of strategies that God gives us as we seek him. I'm sure there's going to be multiple things to, to reach out with media in effective ways. But one of the ways that, we, that God's been speaking to us, because he's been reminding us about how many people are watching videos online. It's incredible that we want to see the gospel on every screen. And we've probably said this before, this, these are some great pictures, but this is reality. These are rickshaw drivers in India in the middle, and they're using media devices, uh, Bluetoothing Bollywood movies back and forth to each other. Why can't we get onto their screens? Well, we can. So next slide, uh, you take a look at this uh, very uh, interesting statistic, brand new statistics, total numbers of mobile uh, internet users over 4 billion and so this is incredible and you know mobile internet users as a percentage of the total internet users 92 percent of people that use the internet are doing it with mobile i don't know if you realize it's huge next slide and so we as we were praying about this god reminded us of the story of moses when moses uh, was coming before the lord and moses says what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? And, and he had all these doubts, right? And then, but, but look at how the Lord responds to him. He says, what is that in your hand? Moses says, it's a staff. So what? It's a phone. It's a mobile phone. He says, throw it down on the ground. And you see what happened with that staff. God used it to do incredible miracles. And God reminded us of that. And he says, Calvin, what's in your hand? And what's in the hand of all those people that you're praying for that you want to get involved in this great task? And I, I said, yeah, it's Android phones, iPhones, different kinds of phones. And the Lord was reminding us, next slide, that, you know, and these are great pictures. They just speak to, you know, to the reality that we see. Right now, everyone has this in their phone, all in their hands, all over the world, Africa, India, Middle East, everywhere in the unreached world. Next slide. So our, our desire is to help equip these folks with how to create uh, in compelling visual stories using their own mobile device. We have already been doing a lot of mobile training uh, which we'll talk about more. Steve's been doing a lot, Steve Baldwin, uh, with the FFS, taking the training to them. But uh, what happens after they get the training and we leave, they don't have the funds to be able to purchase all this great equipment to make these films. But what they do have is right in their pocket. And so we want to take uh, and, and go and develop training and we are, there are already people that are doing this. So we want to gather these folks together and say, this is what we want to do. Come on this campaign with us and let's train people. You can go to the next slide. Let's train people to use their smartphones. Here you see the latest statistics. Go back, please. Uh, to uh, That 73% of those who are using mobile devices have a smartphone. Okay, so slowly but surely the feature phone or what we used to call the dump phone is disappearing and people are using smartphones that are capable of internet and media of all kinds and capable of being used as a really good uh, video camera. Next slide. Uh, see, even universities like Duke University are already starting their own training programs to train people to make films on, on mobile phones. We have a new kit. Uh, and, uh, what we did is we went and did some research and we found a device, a, a little kit like this. Comes with a, a nice microphone that plugs into your Android phone and has a little uh, light, LED light that's battery power with AA batteries. And this whole outfit right here, and it, 
You can also stand it for support. The whole thing is only $50, only $50. So we bought about 20 of these. Carol raised some funds and we bought about 20 and we're going to go and train people, train trainers, and we'll give them one of these kits and show them how to use their own uh, mobile phone to make gospel films. Next slide. Okay, so we're wanting to equip an army of indigenous visual story creators reaching thousands of unreached peoples in our connected world. Amen. So that's the vision we want to leave with you. We've talked a lot about indigenous um, production, and so you can be trained, uh, as Steve said, in the seminar uh, that's coming up, Northern India, and we want to roll out these seminars, uh, smartphone filmmaking seminars. We'll talk more in our breakout. We know Dan Hendrick and Tom and others are already doing it, so let's link together and see how we can train an army. So we're just going to have a 30-second uh, video piece that says, Join the Movement. Thank you, Carol and Calvin. As we wrap and move into our breakouts, just a moment, uh, this is the correct slide. Um, as content creators and leaders and strategists and digital marketers, um, we all have different roles. And if you're like me, you would describe yourself as a disciple maker through others. Well, I want to help invite you back into disciple making again, or perhaps for the first time, uh, by investing your life in directly in the lives of others so that they become more like Jesus. I won't go into much detail other than to say, will you prayerfully write down the names of 12 people that you will intentionally invest in, love on, in the next 12 months. Uh, I've got a bit of an invitation if you can go here, and this will be in the uh, executive summary visual story.org forward slash 12. You'll read a little bit more about how that works. and You can even let us know if you've signed up to take that challenge. Next. So the slide deck, the recording, the notes, all of that will be posted here within the next 10 hours. Again, this will be uh, sent out in an email with this, but if you want to capture this, visualstory.org forward slash VMSF. Next. In five minutes, we'll be ending up with this large group webinar and moving into Zoom meetings for breakouts. We're going to offer topic-specific breakouts with experts. Their breakouts are intended to do a couple of things. You're going to get to meet people who are interested in the same area as you, be able to ask questions and find some resources uh, with others. So, And you can also opt out if you just want to end, and we'll tell you how to do that. But I want you to think about that now, because in just a few minutes, you're going to be deciding, do you want to go in the first breakout with Calvin? The discussion will be centered around media production and content creation. The second breakout will be with John, and that'll be much more focused on personas, marketing strategies, disciple.tools is a customer relation management system that allows you to manage those people that you engage through your social media campaigns. And the third breakout will be with me, anybody interested in how do I more effectively engage people and unreach people with my existing content through a variety of platforms. So those are the three breakouts. Um, and as we uh, just, we'll, we'll wrap here and go to the next slide. Um, yeah, there's trailers and resources, and this will be in there. Um, on the registration page is where we've kind of put most of the video content that I think you've seen in this session. Go to the next. And um, we'll come back to this final thoughts, comments. I'll go over to you, Carol. So this is, like Clyde said, our final BMSF. We'll have another acronym next time. And, <laughs> and hopefully better than that one. <laughs> we, at, we met Clyde 
number of years ago, he said he adopted the Turkmen and he's been the one who's kept us organized and on track and it's been a wonderful friendship with him. And also next slide with uh, Jim. So we really appreciated these two brothers and mentors and leaders and just, you know, we love it when Clyde gets excited with us. And, and if you were here in Thailand, we take you out for a nice Thai meal. So we'll have to wait for a couple years. Um, but through this all, um, you know, there's been one person who's for 10 years have been championing this and he's relentless. I know as his being his wife day and night, he's, Oh, I got to contact this person, this WhatsApp. And he's, he's really pushed this 2020 vision. So we just wanted to honor him and Dave did a cartoon for him. And we <laughs> said, Yay. That looks better than the real thing. <laughs> But that's really his heart that he wanted, he's champion that the unreached would, would come to know Christ. And you can see a little picture back there of Clyde, myself and Jim. We're there cheering him on too. But we just really wanted to thank the team all these years. Mm -hmm. We've done four VMSF now. Thank you so much for your participation, your friendship and your, your relation with us. And we hope it continues. Yeah, we couldn't have done it without your help, uh, Clyde and Jim, and both of you, uh, you know, just are amazing men of God, but also you just come with such great talent and, and resource and experience, and you're real pioneers in your fields, and uh, so we've just been so blessed to, to have you together partnering, uh, you know, with this whole vision. As I said before, we couldn't have done it without your help, and we really appreciate you very much. Well, bro, you are you continue to move me. Thank you for those words of affirmation. And Jim, I'll ask you to unmute, and you can kind of pray, and then we'll go into our breakouts. But I, you know, it, it is hard to feel that sense of celebration through digital technology, and a, we're all together. We're all embracing um, it. This is historic. That's the sense that I'm getting from this moment. Is that you know, the Spirit of God has been working for a very, very long time, and we just happen to be the ones who were carrying the baton at this season of life and ministry, and at this unique time where technology affords us the chance to reach every person. So it is one of my truly great life privileges to be associated with you guys. So I'm celebrating. So Jim, would you give thanks and pray us out, and then I'll have us give directions about the breakout sessions. Lord, what can we say? You're so awesome. We rejoice in you. We give thanks. There's no one like you, how great you are. Lord, thank you that you're building your kingdom, and it's not in doubt. Thank you that you have your plan, that you're carrying it out. Thank you for these dear ones who have responded to your call and walked with you by faith with uh, visions for you and without uh, being discouraged. Thank you for all that you've done through them to date and all that you're going to do. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for that day when there'll be too many people to count around your throne from every tribe and tongue and nation. Thank you that you're using all of these dear ones, the creativity and that you have created them to be your imagers. You were the mm -hmm. creator God, the most creative person the crea uh, in all of, all of uh, the universe. And that you have given that creativity to your children. And so we dedicate it to you, that you will continue to raise up uh, indigenous local people, this vision of people who know their own culture, who know their own people, who know how to tell visual stories that will connect and share your gospel in culturally authentic ways that are biblically accurate for your <laughs> kingdom. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing. We praise you. Thank you for raising up uh, Calvin and Carol and for mm -hmm. raising up Clyde and all of their teams and all of those that are working for John. Lord, too many names to mention, but we praise you for each one represented on this call, each partner Amen. that you're raising up, Amen. that it all counts, Lord, as you are using this. You are the Lord of the Great Commission, Holy Spirit. So we acknowledge you, we praise you, and thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
hey, this has actually worked pretty well. <laughs> I'm really encouraged. Thanks to all of our panelists. Some you see, some you do not. Um, a big thanks to Tom, too, here for uh, doing all the background stuff. Anyway, there's a lot of work that has gone into this, so blessings. So here's where we transition. Um, if you've decided to go into Cal's room, you want to immediately write down the number on the left. Five, or maybe can somebody put these in the chat so it's easier to copy and paste. So group number one. Um, and then somebody, and then group number two with John, that's a 10 digit number. And, and then if you're in the group three with me, that's a nine digit number. So here are the directions. You will, and somebody can put that Zoom link, type that into the chat so everybody can copy and paste that as well. Um, in about two minutes, we will discontinue this and you will go into a new browser, type zoom.us forward slash J forward slash. That will bring up a Zoom window that says enter meeting ID. That's where you plug in that number and then you will be taken into that breakout room with those folks interested in that topic. And again, this won't be recorded. You will be sharing your screen. It's a Zoom meeting, so you'll be much more able to interact and share resources. Is that clear enough? And, uh, and can, yeah, just if, if that's the only question I want to answer. So Otherwise, let's make sure all three links are in there. We've got Calvin's room, we've got the uh, John's room, and uh, we need Clyde's room in there. There we go. So the last oh, one. Oh, so they're, they're good. and they're like, yeah, that, that was even a direct link. So yeah, you can yeah. copy and paste that or whatever. But when I end here, we're not coming back all together. We will only group out into our breakouts. Fair enough. Or right, you can begin to leave the room now and go into your breakout.